Thank you. So I want to tell you that Senator Ted Stevens really did have it right. It really is a series of tubes, and I'm going to tell you why. It's pneumatic tubes. They were in use from about 1860 until as late as 2001 on five continents inside buildings at the urban scale all over the world. Um, what we have right here is Paris, 1860, Baron Haussmann redid the city. Boulevards through the whole thing, good sewers underneath. Sewers are useful because they are conduits. As you see, there are these beautiful vaulted walls, beautiful hygiene. In fact, that's the whole point of this photograph. Therefore, you can have pneumatic tubes and other things, potable water, electricity, um, when it gets invented, lining the walls of, of the tour, sewers in Paris. And the pneumatic tube networks are massive in Paris. In fact, I'm starting with them because they were longer there than anywhere else. They start out between the stock exchange and the central telegraph office in 1866, become a little polygon, 210 kilometers by 1907, and 450 kilometers of pneumatic tubes by 1945. They stayed in operation until 1984. And they were so successful because of the telegraph. Telegraph worked at the, urban, uh, at the national scale, but not at the urban scale. Labor problem, too hard to get messages across the city quickly. And so what you needed to do was run tubes through those convenient sewers um, and send messages in them. And these are actually physical telegram messages. So they go on a wire, except they don't. They're handwritten, and they say, cut, telegram. And you see here the pneumatic tube network and various post things. This is the steam age. That's when they were especially cool. This is in the basement of the central post office, built in 1880 by Julien Guadet. And you see here the mechanisms for both um, compressed and um, rarefied air and the ways that they were made. And in fact, this is where they stored the compressed and rarefied air. These things are 19 meters long. And this is the central um, mechanism for sending them out throughout Paris. They had other buildings that only produced air to push it onward. Now, how did the pneumatic things, how did the pneumatic tubes work? I'll get to this. These are the receptacles. This is an old one. This is a newish one, 1930. You put about 30 of them in there. You put a train of them together. I'll show you this in a second. And on this one, it's physical physical packet switching. You put a code, it routes itself. Totally cool. Here's what happens. You pull it back. You put in your cans, your canisters and pneumatic tubes. You crank it shut and you turn the key, you turn the, the wheel and ring a bell and off they go. They're there 50 miles an hour. They're there at the next stop in two minutes. Totally amazing. This is the biggest installation of pneumatic tubes. This is at this Paris uh, Central Stock Exchange. You see this kind of surveillance Waldo looking guy. You see a child worker and you see a bunch of other facteurs, as they're called. <laughs> it's great. You see the... Oh. This is the coolest. This is when they got blocked in Berlin, they poured wine in them until they got free. But here they fired a gun into the pneumatic tubes. They measured the sound waves and they went down into those convenient sewers and let out the um, blockage. This is just simply the coolest map ever and it shows plan elevation and pressure and um, I probably can't explain it in the 15 seconds I have, but these are from the early tests of how pneumatic tubes would actually work and how fast they get from point A to point B. And here's a woman who is delightfully licking her pneumatic tube um, missive before she sends it through the tubes in this beautiful Art Nouveau postcard from probably about 1903 or so. And off they go and into the ether, into the hands of her lover or her girlfriend or her best friend or whatever it was. However, in the US, they function different, differently. Pneumatic tubes started in Philadelphia in 1893, New York 1897, Chicago about 1900. They sent actual first class mail and they were about the size, as you can see, of, if you look at this one right here, of midget cars. You know, the guys with the fezes? Yeah, like that. Shriners. Um, I, don't, I don't know whether they put Shriners in pneumatic tubes, but <laughs> probably dangerous. Um, it was the truck, the invention of the truck in 1912 that put pneumatic tubes eventually out of service. They even ran over the Brooklyn Bridge until 1953 when they were done. However, thanks to the invention of the electrical age, GSO, um, apparatus in 1907, pneumatic tubes became a desktop device. So then the pneumatic tubes that you see on this beautiful 1920s Lamson pneumatic cubes, uh, tubes uh, uh, brochure, you see light, you see attractive women. They're not stuck in the basement for the most part. And it brings clerkship and stenography and business administration all up to a high level. And right here, in fact, these are people who are stuck in a basement, and I don't know why, because they have pneumatic tubes. And these are pneumatic tubes at Sears Roebuck in Chicago, where they would handle 135,900 pneumatic messages a day. 
and I want to tell you really is a series of tubes because when I did this research at the New York Public Library, I had to send the messages by tubes. So pneumatic tubes, it's true. It really is a series of tubes. Thank you. <laughs>